सो वी हैव कवर्ड ऑलरेडी टू पार्ट दैट इज फ्रीटम लेबर एंड एबडोमल फीटल आई एंड प्रेजेंटेशन नेक्स्ट वी आर हियर विद द प्रोलॉन्ग लेबर सो लेट्स वाइल यू आर स्टार्टिंग प्रोलॉन्ग लेबर अ वेरी फ्रीक्वेंट टर्म इनकाउंटर्ड इज डिस्टोशिया वॉट इज डिस्टोशिया डिस्टोशिया मीन्स डिफिकल्ट लेबर वाई इट कैन अगर बेसिकली टू रीजन वन इज यूट्राइन डिसफंक्शन यूट्राइन डिसफंक्शन इज द मोस्ट कॉमन कॉज ऑफ डिफिकल्ट लेबर यूट्राइन डिसफंक्शन कैन बी ऑफ टू टाइप्स हाउ हाइपोटोनिक कंट्रैक्शन वट इज हाइपोटोनिक कंट्रैक्शन सी दीज आर द नॉर्मल कंट्रैक्शन नॉर्मल कंट्रैक्शन आर दोज अकरिंग फोर टू फाइव कॉन्ट्रैक्शन इन टेन मिनट्स ईच कॉन्ट्रैक्शन ऑफ फोर्टी टू फोर्टी फाइव सेकेंड्स दैट इज नॉर्मल कॉन्ट्रैक्शन हाइपोटोनिक कॉन्ट्रैक्शन इज नाइदर द इंटेंसिटी इज गुड नाइदर द फ्रीक्वेंसी इज गुड राइट हाइपरटोनिक मीन्स मोर देन फाइव कॉन्ट्रैक्शन इन टेन मिनट्स एंड और एनी वन कॉन्ट्रैक्शन लास्टिंग फॉर मोर देन टू मिनट्स दैट इज हाइपरटोनिक कॉन्ट्रैक्शन इट कैन लीड टू डिफिकल्ट लेबर अनदर कॉज ऑफ डिफिकल्ट लेबर इज फीटोपेल्विक डिसप्रोपोर्शन Why it can occur due to these reasons? Either the fetal size is more, or the pelvis is contracted, or there is malpresentation or malposition. Right? With this now knowledge, let's move ahead. Now we'll be dealing with prolonged labour. So we will deal it phase by phase. Let's quickly revise the phases of which we have already discussed. So normal labour has three phases: first, second, and third. First has been divided into latent and active phase. Latent phase is when patient has contractions, might be painful, might not be painful, but regular uterine contractions up till six centimeter. So that is latent labor. So it is six centimeter in all the books now. WHO says five centimeter, but prefer mark six centimeter in your answers. From six centimeter starts active phase, which is from six centimeter to full dilatation. Right, that is active phase. Then second stage. Second stage is from full dilatation to delivery of the baby. That is second stage of labor. What is third stage? Third stage is the stage of placental separation. Right. So this was normal labor. Now let's study about prolonged labor phase by phase, latent phase. When do we call it prolonged? When it is more than twenty hours in primary and more than fourteen hours is multi. So remember, more than twenty hours in primary, more than fourteen hours in multi is prolonged later phase. Right. so how to manage see latent phase is a time when the birth canal is actually preparing for pushing the baby out into the world right so it is preparing even if it is prolonged it is preparing itself let it be let it take time so don't do much if the latent phase is prolonged the first treatment is observe keep observing why because you will see that 85% of women will enter into active phase themselves and in 10% at least the pain will subside it means they had false labor right so just observe another thing is if patient has pain and she is really bothered with them then at least sedate the patient so next option is you can also sedate her third is oxytocin see 85% will enter the active phase themselves 10% had false labor in 5% you might need oxytocin right only in 5% so these are the things which you have to do in prolonged labor what you can not do is in prolonged labor never do arm why because you know that 10% were in false labor so you will not like like to rupture membrane of a patient who was in false labor right so never do arm in prolonged latent phase and prefer not doing lscs for prolonged latent phase these are the management lscs should not be a choice right next comes prolonged active phase See, active phase is when now baby has to come out. Now the patient has to push. Now the the actual labor, actual descent will start. So prolonged active phase is described in two types. First is protracted dilatation and descent. Protracted dilatation and descent means slow dilatation, slow descent. Another is arrest disorder. It means the dilatation and descent are not occurring, not at all. So when do you call it protracted? when dilatation is less than 1.5 cm per hour in multi and less than 1.2 cm per hour in primary or if you talk in reference to descent of head it is less than 1 cm per hour in primary and less than 2 cm per hour in multi so these are the numbers which have been recently quoted in the book so remember these numbers to define protracted dilatation or descent arrest means no dilatation or no descent is occurring for how long for at least 4 hours for 4 hours there has been no change then you call it arrest disorder how to manage 
now you have to manage the patient if active phase is prolonged you cannot just sit you have to do something what you can do is rule out cpd first of all see that is the pelvis spacious enough for the baby to come out see whether the fetal size is average or not can the baby actually come out of the pelvis so rule out cpd then look for the uterine contractions if contractions are not good i told you what are good contractions in units you can measure it as 180 montevideo units so what are these units how are they calculated that we will discuss in foundation course for now you just know if the contractions are less than 180 montevideo units means contractions are not good you might have to start with oxytocin right if you have given the oxytocin still the progress is not occurring or after giving oxytocin the pain has started for how long for 6 hours so either there is no progress for at least 4 hours even the pain has not come with oxytocin for 6 hours then you have to take the patient for cesarean so you can easily compare it with the story of hare and tortoise now tortoise is running a 10 km race right so when it starts the run then tortoise is slow he'll start slow let him be slow he is preparing he is conserving the energy for 6 km up till 6 km you will not do anything you let the tortoise be slow Once the daughter is reached reach six kilometer and he's still slow or he sleeps, it's okay if he sleeps. But for how long? If he sleeps for more than four hours, or if he's he's still still slow for after six kilometer, then to do something, you have to make him understand that it is important to win. So what will you do? You have to do three things. First, see whether the daughter is capable of running the race or not. If he is, then give him a push. Give him a push to run. If still he is not running, he is not reaching that line, finish line. Then pick up the tortoise and put him on the finish line. I know it is cheating, but you have to make him win, right? That is what you are doing in active phase. In latent phase, do nothing. In active phase, rule out CPD, start oxytocin, and if nothing happens, LSCS, right? Another term which you will be encountered is precipitous labor. Precipitous labor is very rapid labor, labor which is completed in less than. 3 hours now it is not a very good thing to be happy about that wow labor has completed really fast no it is not a good thing why because it is associated with lot of complications that is abruption meconium pph and amniotic fluid embolism right so this is precipitous labor let's solve the question now prolonged first stage of labor is defined as latent phase more than 20 hours in primary yes this is our answer latent phase more than 20 hours in multi no this number has to be 14 hours rate of cervical dilatation less than 1.2 cm per hour in multi in multi this number is less than 1.5 and in primary this number is 1.2 so remember these facts next question 38 weeks primary presented to labor room with minimal labor pains and contraction examination cervix is 2 cm and 50% effaced patient's pulse is 86 bp and what should be done so vitals are stable she has minimal pain and she is in latent phase what will you do induce labor by arm will you do arm in latent phase no never so this is not your answer give oxytocin to augment why you don't need to you don't don't give oxytocin as such sedate the patient by giving finargan see the labor pains are minimal patient does not seem to be bothered by them so you don't need sedation as such observe the patient and wait for increase in contractions yes this is what you will do in this case so this was about the prolonged labor now we'll read about partogram why but how will you know the, that whether the labor is prolonged or not you have to plot it somewhere right that is the partogram for what is partogram it is a graphical representation of progress of labor along with maternal and fetal conditions right so it will tell you three things progress of labor and maternal and fetal conditions so it is a tool to diagnose whether the labor labor is progressing well or not so this is a classical partogram you will find in every labor room it has four parts for your ease i have divided into four parts that we will read first is the fetal information next is the cervicograph second is uterine contraction and third is maternal information so we will be reading it into four parts let's study the fetal information here you will apply everything related to fetus so fetal heart rate has to be plotted every 30 minutes these small boxes are 30 minutes each so you will plot fetal heart rate every 30 and they have to be between 110 to 160 
सो इफ दे आर परसिस्टेंटली लेस देन वन टेन और लेस देन हंड्रेड मीन्स सीवियर ब्रेडी कार्डिया और इट इज परसिस्टेंटली मोर देन वन सिक्सटी इवन बियॉन्ड वन एट्टी मीन्स सीवियर टकी कार्डिया देन यू माइट हैव टू इंटरवीन राइट एमनोटिक फ्लूड एमनोटिक फ्लूड कैन बी लेबल्ड एज सी फॉर क्लियर बी फॉर ब्लड स्टेंट एम फॉर मिकोनियम स्टेंट और ए फॉर एबसेंट दैट इज हाउ यू चार्ट एमनोटिक फ्लूड मोल्डिंग सी वाई द मोल्डिंग इज अकरिंग मोल्डिंग विल कैन डिक्रीज द डायमीटर ऑफ फीटल हेड बाय ऑलमोस्ट वन सेंटीमीटर राइट सो मोल्डिंग इज इज गुड इन दैट वे बट अप टू वॉट लेट If there is no molding, if you do the PV and you can palpate the sutures and fontanelles, it means molding is not there. That is grade zero. That is grade zero molding. When you see that feet, the sutures are uh, sutures are coming in contact with each other. That is grade one molding. When sutures are overlapping each other, that is grade two. And if they are overlapping and you are trying to apply pressure vaginally and you are not able to correct them, that is grade three. So molding occurs while labour. but up to what level up to grade 2 molding is also considered normal but grade 3 is never normal right so if grade 3 molding is there it means there is severe cpd and now you have to do the intervention right so you can get all the fetal information from this part of partogram fetal information done next we'll read about maternal information maternal information is plotted here you will plot the pulse by a round circle every half hour every half hour you will plot the maternal pulse bp is plotted by this this is systolic this is diastolic every 4 hour bp temperature and urine is plotted every 4 hour right so this is about maternal information done now next we'll see the uterine contractions here see i told you every small box is 30 minutes you will see the uterine contractions every 30 minutes the number of boxes you color will tell you how many contractions are there in 10 minutes if you color one box it means one contraction in 10 minutes two box two contractions in 10 minutes so by this you can know number of contractions in 10 minutes how to know the intensity of contractions see if you are making these dots these dots will tell you that intensity is less than 20 seconds these are weak contractions if you are doing making lines like this it means it's a moderate intensity of 20 to 40 seconds if you are properly coloring the box like this it means the intensity is good of more than 40 seconds so by this graph you will know the number of contractions and their intensity along with that you can mark the oxytocin if you are using them so we have done with uterine contractions now we will study the cervicograph 